Hi, I'm Eric Rubel. My law partner, Alexis Sorrell, and I are co-leaders of the Viterally Law Group of Washer Burstein. Up until now, Alexis and I have provided you information regarding your surrogacy journey. In the last few months, the United States Supreme Court rendered a decision which may impact that journey. In Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization, our highest court found that the federal constitution did not guarantee a woman the fundamental right to an abortion. Sadly, Roe versus Wade had been overturned. So many questions arose with this new decision. Unfortunately, there are no clear answers. The right to an abortion was now to be decided at the state level by state legislatures. Many states have already enacted laws severely limiting when an abortion can be performed in that state. For instance, in Florida, abortion is permitted within the first 15 weeks of pregnancy and afterward in limited situations. In Georgia, abortion is only permitted within the first six weeks of pregnancy and then only in limited situations after that period. In other words, a woman may not know she is pregnant before her right to have an abortion has expired. In Louisiana, abortion is prohibited at any stage of pregnancy unless the pregnant woman's life is at risk or there is a fetal abnormality. The same is true for Alabama, Missouri, Texas, and Oklahoma. But let's look at where abortion is more liberally permitted. In Oregon, Colorado, New Mexico, and New Jersey, there are no limits on a pregnant woman obtaining an abortion. Most states permit a pregnant woman getting an abortion up until viability and afterward if her life is at risk. These states include California, Connecticut, Hawaii, Illinois, Maryland, and New York, to name just a few. There are more. The breadth, language, and details of these laws vary state by state. Where the restrictions are absolute, those states impose liability on physicians who perform abortions within the state. Some states like Texas and Oklahoma also extend potential liability to individuals who participate in, facilitate, or quote, aid and abet an abortion. What this means exactly remains unknown, but I would not suggest testing those limits. We mentioned in one of our first videos that it is critical that you consider the potential state laws that could govern your surrogacy arrangement with your surrogate, and this is one of the reasons why. The state law that governs your surrogacy agreement and legal parentage will most commonly be the law of the state in which your surrogate resides and will give birth. However, your state of residence may also govern. Naturally, whether the governing state has anti-abortion legislation should be evaluated at the matching stage. If you match with a surrogate who does live in a state with laws restricting abortion access, it does not necessarily mean that you cannot proceed with that match. However, you should carefully evaluate the nuances of the state law with legal counsel. For example, if your surrogate lives in a state where abortion is prohibited, but the law does not extend potential liability to anyone other than the physician within the state who performs the abortion, you could proceed in that state. In such a situation, your surrogacy agreement should include provisions where an abortion will be performed if necessary and that you guys will be financially responsible for the cost of the abortion and her transportation to a state, safe state to have it performed. Now, the reversal of Roe v. Wade has the potential for a broader impact on reproductive medicine, including the possibility of fetal personhood legislation, which is conferring fetuses and embryos the same legal standing as a living person. Such laws could expose routine art procedures such as IVF, pre-implantation genetic testing, and the discarding of unused embryos to legal challenge, and providers who practice such procedures to potential liability. Now presently, there are no statutes in the US criminalizing the destruction of embryos. However, the definition set forth in some statutes is disconcerting. For instance, in Kentucky, an unborn child is defined as, quote, that point in time when a male human sperm penetrates the zona pellicuta of a female human ovum. According to Kentucky, an embryo need not even be transferred to a woman's uterus before being considered an unborn child. 
This would seem to suggest that an unborn child includes frozen embryos being stored at an IVF clinic or any other facility. This is an evolving issue. Speak to counsel and weigh your options before you proceed. It is critical to know your rights and your surrogate's rights. And remember, as a family building partner for GWK Academy, we'd be happy to answer your questions, any questions you may have.